Good evening and welcome to the UTRGV UT Health Rio Grande Valley School of Nursing sixth, not first, not second, not third, not fourth, not fifth, but sixth annual BSN White Coat Ceremony. We all are very proud of all of you to be here today. You are the best of the best. You are, uh, ex you've made applications, you took courses, you worked diligently to make sure that you're sitting in that seat tonight. And boy, do you look good. People are already taking pictures of you, you look so good. It's gonna be a night of celebrations and welcoming you to the journey of becoming a nurse. And you're gonna hear things about the gold foundation and the little pins that you're gonna be wearing so proudly on your uniform and on your uh, jackets, on your lab coats now. You're gonna hear about the history, a little bit of nursing, about Florence Nightingale and how important she was to where we are. And you're gonna hear your name as we proudly present your coat and coat you and again, welcome you into the journey of becoming a nurse. So not to be long-winded, I'm going to start the festivities with our own Dean, Dr. Sharon Radzeminski, who is the Dean of the School of Nursing. Hi, good evening. It is so great to see so many friends and family that have come here tonight to support our incoming class in the School of Nursing. I don't know if you know that these young men and young women here have to have a 3.96 overall GPA to be sitting in that chair tonight. That has never happened before. They have, you know, set the bar really, really high. So these are incredibly talented young men and young women who so well deserve to be here. And we are so honored really honored that they chose UTRGV School of Nursing to continue their education because they are exceptional. So I know you know that already, but I just thought I'd remind you of that. Today is a welcoming ceremony. It is steeped in tradition. Now, the white coat is not so much traditional. It is now, um, you know, but this is, Nursing has a lot of history. It has a lot of traditions. And Dr. Hensley just mentioned Florence Nightingale. Well, for all of you who don't like wearing white or white scrubs or low cut shoes or putting your hair up off your collar or covering tattoos or not being allowed to wear jewelry, you can thank Miss Nightingale because she set the bar for how men and women were to dress if they were gonna you know, provide care for the sick and the injured. Now back in the 1800s, you wouldn't be wearing scrubs. You would have up to your neck, long sleeves, a big apron, down to the floor clothing. Um, because nurses, of course, were to present, you know, what basically she was, she was dressing up nurses to look like Catholic nuns. I mean, that's, bas that's where it was. Um, but when you first went out to take care of a patient, the very, very first time when you had some classes and you were allowed now to actually go out and provide care, they finished your uniform. And they did that by putting a cap on your head. And for 140 years, nursing had capping ceremonies where they put the cap on the student nurse's head, you know, the day or the week before she was actually go to the hospital. It's warm in here, don't you think? Yeah. Um, we know that, we, we're trying to get it fixed, but I'm seeing, you know, a million flags and these white coats get warm, let me tell you. Um, anyway, and then, so everybody knew this was a nurse, this wasn't a housekeeper, this wasn't an aide, or this wasn't anybody else, this was actually a nursing student. And then when you graduated, they put a big black band across it, or some colored band that told everybody in the world now you were a graduate nurse. Well, you know, obviously we don't do that anymore. Times have changed, uniforms have changed. We don't dress nurses up that way. But we still want to find a way to acknowledge that these men and women have come this far and they have taken, you know, what they need that makes them capable of walking into a patient's room and providing care. And so this ceremony actually is one that welcomes these individuals 
uh, into the School of Nursing to begin their nursing education. I'm not going to tell you any more about that white coat because you have a speaker later on that's going to talk to you all about what this means. Um, but anyway, I was told just to give a welcome. So, welcome. We, <laughs> we are so happy you are here. We know this is going to be, in some ways, a very long journey and in some ways the shortest one you've ever seen. Your education, if you haven't noticed, might be more challenging than maybe what you had in the past. You may have noticed that the way you're taught is a little bit different than perhaps you were taught in the past. You might find that it's a lot more work than maybe what you spent on things than you were in the past. Um, and there isn't as much error that's allowed. I mean, you know, take the first med test, what's passing? 100%. You know, because why? You can't go into a patient's room anymore and be 80% right. It's, you know, it's not about A, B, C anymore. It's about taking care of another person, a complete stranger, walking in a room, someone you don't know, and giving of yourself to make them better. And boy, that's a, that's a long, tough road. And it is one of the greatest experiences you're ever going to have. So, welcome. Start the journey. It's a great one. It's with great pleasure I now introduce to you Professor Luz Silva, who will give the welcome in Spanish. Buenas tardes. Bienvenidos a la ceremonia de la bata blanca. ¿Qué significado tiene esta ceremonia? Eso significa que los estudiantes están listos para hacer sus prácticas en el hospital. Al principio del semestre, uh, les dijimos a, los, a un grupo de estudiantes que anotaran en un papelito a quién le agradecían por estar aquí y también a quién admiraban más en su vida. Y sí, ellos dijeron que les agradecen a ustedes, a su familia, quien los apoya para que estén aquí. Y también la mayoría dijo que ustedes son las personas que más admiran, su familia. Admiran a la mamá que los sacó adelante solita, los papás que llegaron sin saber inglés, pero han trabajado muy duro para salir adelante, a sus abuelos que los guiaron, Ellos los quieren y los admiran por todo lo que les han dado. Y sí, sabemos que los van a seguir apoyando cuando lleguen con hambre, con sueño, cansados de estudiar, cuando no pueden participar en un cumpleaños, en una carne asada, porque tienen un examen o de ATI. <risa> Créanles, <risa> es cierto, porque este programa es difícil. Necesita mucha dedicación, pero al final no los van a ver ahí sentados, sino acá, listos para ejercer la profesión de enfermería. Y todo gracias a ustedes y claro por el esfuerzo que, los, que ellos van a hacer y que ustedes los van a apoyar. Enhorabuena y gracias por su apoyo. Oh, is that heartwarming welcome she gives. Uh, the next uh, presenter is going to be the Associate Vice President for Faculty and Health Affairs, Dr. Sean Saladin. As Dr. Adminsky said, she was supposed to welcome, I greet, so greetings. But, but I want to say on behalf of Dr. John Krause, Executive Vice President um, for the Division of Health Affairs, Welcome, and um, we appreciate you being here. It's, it's quite an honor for me to stand here before you and greet you all. I just want to say thank you, particularly to the well, the students for coming here for one thing, but the family for supporting them and all their friends that are here. And I'd also like to point out to the students, talk directly to you, that yeah, that 3.9 is pretty impressive, but you got a pretty tough road to hoe coming up here, but. You got an excellent faculty, you got supportive staff, you got visionary leadership, and I want you to know that there is not an executive team meeting 
but I am in where the great things that nursing is doing is not mentioned. They're always talking about how tough it is to get in. The curriculum is fantastic. Y'all are going to learn so much. So, with that said, yes, we'll see you today. We'll also, hopefully, we'll see you at the pinning ceremony, right? You know, in a couple of years, y'all be graduating. And, all right. So, don't stop there. Keep learning. Come back for nurse practitioner. Go out in the field for a little while. See what the issues are. Come back for a um, doctor, if a DNP or a PhD in nursing, and then come back in, teach with us, research with us, serve with us. Just come back in, we'll foster the next generation of nurses through. Because as Dr. Edminski said, this has been going on. When was the first nurse? 1850s. The 1850s. It's, and I don't think there's anybody in the room that doesn't know what a nurse is before they walked into the room, you know what I'm saying? Everybody knows. So we need you to continue your education, do wonderful things out there, think about what the issues are, the problems, how to solve, how to make the world a better place, and come back and work with us, okay? So with that said, welcome, and we'll move on to the next exciting part. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Sullivan. Next, we're going to have the presentation and introduction of the faculty by Ms. Jolly Jason. Good evening, everyone. Here I am to introduce all faculty members, Dr. Sharon Ratzminski and Dr. Saladin, who just you heard from them. Next is Ms. Nancy Nado. Ms. Margaret Ruby, Ms. Pamela Sullivan, Mr. Aaron Salinas, Ms. Rita Otega, Dr. Jani Acevedo, And I have Ms. Mary Maggie Barrero, <laughs> Dr. Melinda Rodriguez, <laughs> and we have Ms. Lori De Leon. I don't have it in order, I'm sorry about it. <laughs> Ms. Dahlia Paul. <laughs> Ms. Betty Phillip. <laughs> Ms. Joanna Imperia. <laughs> Ms. Sawa Alcosta. <laughs> Ms. Rebecca Hernandez. <laughs> Dr. Beatrice Bautista. Dr. Linda Inns, <laughs> Ms. Betty John, <laughs> Ms. Myla Garza, <laughs> Ms. Luz Maria Silva, <laughs> Ms. Rosa Silvestro, <laughs> Mrs. Sharon McKinney, here and uh, I have Pauline Giorgio and Dr. Ligi Matthew here and I think I introduced everyone did I miss any Ms. Usama Thomas here I'm sorry did I miss anyone no okay I'm Jolly Jason thank you Thank you so much. 
The next presenter actually was uh, the individual who helped coordinate this event, and I'd like to give her a proper applause as well. That's Dr. Lee G. Matthews, and she's going to introduce your keynote speaker, so clap really loud. Thank you. Honorable guests, dear students, families, friends, and my dear colleagues, I'm glad and honored to introduce Mr. Miguel Mata, one of our previous students who graduated with honors from UTPA BSN program in 2013. Mr. Mata pursued his education to obtain his master's degree as a family nurse practitioner from the University of Cincinnati, Ohio in 2016. Mr. Mata's employment experience includes working as an intensive care unit nurse in McAllen Medical Center, and he has also worked with Dr. Francisco Rugama in internal medicine clinic, and also with a vascular and wound specialist group providing care for patients with chronic limb-threatening ischemia. Besides consulting patients in the clinic, Mr. Mata is also the director of nursing for Laser Surgical Solutions and Valley Ambulatory Surgical Center, rendering wound care services to patients in Mission Regional Hospital, McAllen Medical, NAP Medical Center, and Harlingen Medical Center. Mr. Mata has been involved as a leading team member in the accreditation and reaccreditation process and currently holds ATLS, ACLS, and BLS certification. In addition, he is a certified lymphatic therapist through Norton School of Lymphatics. He is a member of American Nursing Association, Texas Nurse Practitioner, and American Professional Wound Care Association. So I hereby welcome Mr. Miguel A. Mata. <clears throat> well, thank you very much for that nice introduction. Um, guys, I graduated from here in 2013, first of all. Padres, perdón, me dieron cinco minutos, no más en inglés puedo, eh? Este, so kids, kids to me, gosh, I'm getting old, man. Um, first of all, Congratulations on your acceptance into UTRGV's BSN program. You guys are having a great night. Yes? No? Maybe? Okay, nodding heads. We're going to need more energy for the nursing program, I'm telling you. Um, you guys, you're going to love the program, right? If you love waking up at 6 a.m. for clinicals, right? You like studying to 2 a.m. for your next quiz and exam? You guys, you guys are into that? You know, pretty high GPA, you better be into it. All right. Um, <laughs> Guys, I'm just teasing. Uh, only because I already went through it myself, okay? But I can tell you that at the end of it, it will all be worth it, all right? You guys are embarking on a journey you won't forget for the rest of your lives, all right? And believe me when I tell you that that statement is not an exaggeration. You'll remember this accomplishment for the rest of your lives because it's going to shape who you become as people. And this is what I mean by that. You will never look at people the same, all right? You're going to be able to contain, uh, you're not going to be able to contain yourself when you're at the mall at the grocery store, at the house, you know, you're gonna be assessing people like crazy. Uh, you're gonna find yourself advising your parents on what to eat and what not to eat. You know, your brother, your sister's gonna get home from a sporting event and their ankle's gonna hurt and you're gonna be like, that's a great two sprain, that's a great three sprain. And they're like, shut up, I wanna watch TV. But uh, anyways, there's, uh, there's many challenges coming your way, guys, as a nursing student, but I guarantee you it's gonna be worth your maximum effort. Now, I'm going to fast forward you guys about two and a half years when you're graduates, all right? I'm just going to assume you guys are going to make it, all right? Um, <laughs> consider this, all right? Imagine your first day alone with patients. Imagine yourself, right, as a guardian and advocate for your patient. Imagine knowing how much trust a patient places in you. And I'm going to tell you, most of the time, it's not even by choice, all right? Let me tell you, that trust is palpable. They're going to depend on you. You get a report from the outgoing nurse. This is the life of a nurse, right? You're going to get a report from the outgoing nurse, right? You're going to review your orders. You're going to check for any ordered studies or labs from the doctor. You're going to make sure you assess your patient from head to toe to ensure there hasn't been any changes. 
check your vitals, check your IV lines, check the IV site, make sure there's no infection, right? Make sure it hasn't been on there more than 72 hours. I still remember. All right. Make sure there's no signs of infection. You review past labs for any missed abnormal findings. Then after everything's okay, you administer 13 medications that are due at 0900. You then make sure that there's no any adverse reactions to the IV antibiotic in particular, right? Uh, you make sure the pump is running correctly, that the lines don't have any kinks. If the patient has dementia, you wanna make sure they're not wrapped around it, right? They might pull it off. Uh, you're gonna stop, you're gonna look, everything's fine, and you're proud. I did it, bam, I gave my meds, no problem. You look down the hallway, there's still five to six patients you have to repeat the process for. That's a calm day in the life of a nurse. That's, that's what's going for. And I, I hope I'm not scaring you. My plan is not to discourage you. And I hope you don't feel overwhelmed. But I just want to give you guys a heads up uh, as to what is ahead for you guys. Nursing is an incredibly rewarding career because you get to do the job. A lot of people don't have the courage to do, honestly. And quite literally don't have the guts to. Just tell my brothers. They gag 90% of the stories that I tell them, all right? <clears throat> it's HIPAA compliant. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> I know it's cliche, and I'm sure you've heard stories about how, how a nurse caught an allergy that wasn't noted on the chart or stopped the wrong drug uh, on a patient, you know, on a wrong patient situation. Um, I've been a nurse for almost six years, and let me tell you, it's true. It's not an exaggeration. You really will have that responsibility on your hands. You will be the last line of defense against an error, and it will be up to you and only you which nurse you're going to be, the one who stops it or the one who lets it slip. All right. Now, on the other hand, I'll be real, mistakes happen, all right, period. We're human, but it's up to us to limit these mistakes to the minor ones that do not lead to harm. With today's protocols and knowledge, it really it shouldn't be a problem for you guys. Now, I'm going to leave you with the following advice. Um, I'm not perfect, but I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna just going to suggest this. Don't be afraid. All right. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Do not be afraid of the task at hand and do not run away from an NG2 placement. You know who you are, all right? Remember I said this, you guys look at each other because that day is gonna come, there's a conscious patient, they're gonna ask for an NG2, and they'll be like, I'm busy, I gotta go change a patient. <laughs> but seriously guys, just don't be afraid, all right? I want you guys to own up to what you're gonna be and what you basically already are. You're a registered nurse, the soldiers of healthcare. You guys are in the front line. You're gonna be the first to see everyone and everything, from gunshot wounds to fractured femurs on a child. You're gonna walk an average of four to five miles a day on your average work day. And you're gonna hold your urge to go to the restroom because, well, your patient needs you. You're a registered nurse. Um, if you didn't know, you're most likely to experience workplace violence above all other careers. Did you guys know that? Over cops? Yeah, scary. But you don't run away. I don't see anybody heading for the exits. Why? You're a registered nurse. Patients need you guys. So, ladies and gentlemen, if there's any one thing I can ask you is to learn the magical skill of empathy, and it is a skill. Um, and never apologize for being a patient advocate. If you feel something is off, Report it. Call your charge nurse. In your case, call your instructor. If you question an order, if it doesn't make sense to you, question it. Trust your instinct. Call the doctor. Call the instructor. Confirm the order, even if they get mad. In the end of the day, and I can attest to this, they will thank you for finding that one critical error you stopped from happening. You guys, you're going to change for the better. All right? You have made a decision that you're, gonna, you're just going to cherish for the rest of your lives. You're going to be better people. Congratulations again on your acceptance, and good luck on your journey, guys. Thank you for listening. Have a good night. Now, I want you to close your eyes and think, that's what you're going to be like in six years. <laughs> Maybe a little bit longer. Six years since you graduated. Almost six years. Eight years. It'll be eight years, and this will be you. It's great honor that I get introduced to the next individual who's going to speak to you about the symbolism of this ceremony. The director of the School of Nursing for the BSN program, Dr. Melinda Rodriguez. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Sharon, very much. 
Um, I've been asked to speak to you tonight about the significance of this event and of the pins and the coats that you'll be receiving in a few minutes. This ceremony is one that welcomes you to be a part of one of the most trusted professions. A little bit of the history behind uh, the white coat ceremony. Dr. Arnold Gold was a professor of clinical neurology and pediatrics. He noted that the medical students taking the Hippocratic Oath after their four years of training were four years too late. Therefore, the white coat ceremony was developed as an expression of humanism in medicine at the start of their medical training, thus establishing the Arnold Gold Foundation in 1993. This iconic ritual emphasizes the importance of compassionate, collaborative, and scientifically based delivery of care that begins on the very first day of your training. In 2014, recognizing the vital role that nurses play in, health, in the healthcare team, the Gold Foundation partnered with the American Association of Colleges of Nursing to adopt a white coat ceremony of nursing. More than, a, more than 310 schools of nursing now participate and the number continues to grow. You received a little card as you signed in this evening. The little card had a little pin and I'm hoping that you do apply that pin to your uniform or to your lab coat. The pin that you've received tonight contains a gold Mobius loop, if you'll look at it. It looks like a little eternal loop. It symbolizes the continuous bond of trust. Wear it proudly, and every time you see it, let it remind you of your commitment to your patients and the importance of providing a humanistic approach in the care you render to each of your patients and their families. We can't forget the families. Your families play a very important role in the healthcare delivered and, and how your patients recover. The pin is engraved with the saying, keeping healthcare human, and I want you to remember that. Last, the oath. The oath is the most important element of the ceremony, and the students will be taking this in front of family members, the school leadership, and their peers. Reciting this oath will acknowledge your central obligation of caring for the patients that you serve. It acts as a reminder that the profession you are entering is one of integrity and high ethical standards. The oath promotes the importance of advocating for your patients and their families. You will commit to accepting the lifelong obligation to improve your professional knowledge and competence for the sole purpose of helping people to maximize their wellness across the lifespan. One thing that I wanna leave with you is that no matter the age of the patient, no matter their ethnic, ethnical background, no matter their financial status, every patient is a very important person. And so as a nurse, you're taking on this responsibility and this commitment to take care of these patients at all times, including the family. So once again, congratulations. I look forward to meeting each and every one of you and being at your graduation in a couple of years. Thank you. Thank you. The moment you've been waiting for. Okay, so I guess are the seniors going to help them line up over here, is that correct? All right, let them get into position. They're old hats, they did this a year ago. All right, and the faculty, the first group of faculty that would like to stand up and coat some students here and welcome them into the journey of nursing. And next is, uh, is Ms. Professor uh, Lou Silva, who's going to do the announcement of the names. You go stand to oh, all the way to the end. Yeah. Did you practice it? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Just wait until. Got them lined up? Brianna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're ready? Okay, we're going to start with Fe Falcon. Brianna Almendares. 
Cecilia González. Okay. Rizalín. Rizalín Joy de la Torre. Nathaniel Martínez. Yes, you can. Thank you. And congratulations. You can, you can go back to your seats. Thank you. Kevin Perez. Anaí Anaya. Bay Kaunchin. Barbara Mora. Renee Champion. Faculty, you can put the coat. Okay, so then it will be the next. Thank you, faculty. We're going to get the next group now. Next faculty. Next faculty group, please. Mm -hmm. Ms. Joseph? Joseph Isle Puente. <laughs> Jocelyn Lopez. Osiel Bueno. Francisco Pérez. <laughs> Kessiri Peña. Thank you. You can have your seats now. Emily Flores. <laughs> Lía Acevedo. <laughs> Kaylin Rodríguez. <laughs> Daniela Limas. <laughs> Vanessa Ríos.
Jennifer Carrillo. Cristina Tijerina. Daisy de los Reyes. Beatriz Gómez. Rebeca Martínez. Jiménez, <laughs> Samantha Griner, <laughs> Crystal Martinez, <laughs> Kathy Rosas, <laughs> Claudia Silva. Stephanie Sauceda, Brianna Ramirez, Carolina Pavón, Mirka Palacios, Victoria Salinas. Hacel Montes, <laughs> Regina Rodríguez, <laughs> Brianna Alanis, <laughs> Damián Peña, <laughs> Mariana Sarquis.
Doctor Rodriguez. Whoever, whoever has not voted. Okay. Jasmine Marquez. Elida Garcia. Hailey Caso. Cristina Martinez. Komal Mohan. Omar Domínguez. David Fonseca. Sergio Sánchez. Tamara Mejía. Tamara Mejía. Ana Gutiérrez. Erika López, Sandra González, okay. Jolene Sustaita, Kaylin Cabrera, Cassandra Lucio. Okay, we're going to switch back up now. Alisa Canales, Elías Barrón, Ana Trujillo Reina, Dominga Reyes, José Garza, Alexander Marquez,
congratulations. Georgina Perez. Juanita Trujillo. Gabriela Chavarría. Victoria Flores. And Evelyn Perret. faculty. Congratulations to our students. Before I forget, if I didn't make this announcement, I think Professor Nadeau would be very upset with me. Before you all leave, you need to come here to the stage at the end, correct, and get one group picture at the very, is that correct, Professor Nadeau? Yes, okay. Just want to make sure, I, one year I forgot, and uh, so, okay. So moving to the next important part is the citing of the oath. And the oath is going to be led by Professor Pamela Sullivan. OK, we're going to recite the white coat oath. And I think that we should all stand, students, with our white coats. And I'll get us started. You ready? Okay. I take this oath voluntarily with the full realization of the responsibility with which I am entrusted by the public. As a nurse dedicated to being a client advocate who provides excellent, high quality, safe, mind, body, spirit, holistic, humanistic, culturally competent care, I solemnly pledge that I will consider my primary concerns to be the welfare of humanity and relief of suffering, act in a compassionate, empathetic, and trustworthy manner in all aspects of my care, apply my knowledge, experience, and skills to the best of my ability to assure optimal, holistic outcomes for my client's patients, exercise sound professional judgment while abiding by legal and ethical requirements. Promote, advocate for, and strive to protect each client's patient's health, safety, mind, body, spirit, and rights. Accept the lifelong obligation to improve my professional knowledge and competence to help people help themselves maximize their wellness across the lifespan. With this pledge, I accept the duties and responsibilities that embody the nursing profession. Congratulations. Did you see that transformation, Dr. Rudzminski? Did you see the stethoscopes? They suddenly lashed around their neck and wore like the necklace. They didn't take long to acclimate to being a nursing student. Ah, oh, the scissors, yes, and the band, the band of scissors. Yeah, didn't take long. The closing remarks this evening is going to be done by Dr. Linda Eines.
You come from near and far, bringing with you valuable life's experiences and knowledge that will help shape you as a professional nurse. Whether you are the first in your family to go to college, the first in your family to choose nursing as your profession, or following in the footsteps of a long family tradition of professional nurses, all of you share a desire to help others. You should be congratulated for your achievement on being selected. You have earned your right of passage to the nursing profession. This evening, we have come together to celebrate your achievements, to mark the beginning of your nursing journey, and to highlight your commitment to remain compassionate as you deliver safe, patient-centered, culturally competent care to individuals, families, and communities. And again, we welcome you into the nursing profession. I'd like to pause before we start with pictures to thank a few individuals who were instrumental in creating this event for you. Um, if Dr. Lee G. Matthews. <laughs> Dr. Melinda Rodriguez. <laughs> Colleen Jojo. <laughs> Betty John. Nancy Nadeau. Where did Nancy go? Oh, did she away? Oh, there she is. There she is. And now Liji would like to give a special presentation. First of all, our guests, we have something for you. Because I, I, you, I was, I remember you when you were the baby. And, 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 and I'm so proud of you. Still so. the baby. Okay. Okay. Thank you. But thank you, Paul. Well, thank you Have so much. Day. Appreciate it. Thank you. One last thank you. Thank you to all the nursing staff that without their assistance, all of you wouldn't have gone in the program, right? They're really the people that you call when you need something, right? When you're looking for an instructor or hand in a paper lay or begging for a favor, who do you call? You call Sabine Castillo, Lourdes Sanchez, Ama Castillo. You're laughing, Rosa Reyna, Eva Martinez, or you catch Mr. Jose Villarreal between one of the three campuses, right? Yeah, you know. We'd like to thank them too. Without them, we couldn't do what we do. So that concludes our event tonight. Don't forget, we're taking pictures and congratulations.